ایک ہیرا تھا جو ہم سے جدا ہو گیا اس نے ایک نظم لکھی تھی اور اس نے شروع ہی اس طرح کیا تھا کہ میں خلیفہ وقت سے سب سے زیادہ پیار کرتا ہوں اور ختم اس طرح کیا تھا کہ خلیفہ وقت سے جو مجھے پیار ہے اور محبت ہے وہ انہیں کبھی پتہ نہیں چلے گی لیکن اے پیارے تارے میں تمہیں بتاتا ہوں کہ تمہارے ان آخری الفاظ سے پہلے بھی مجھے پتہ تھا کہ تمہیں خلافت سے پیار اور محبت کا تعلق تھا تمہارے ہر عمل سے ہر حرکت و سکون سے جب تمہارے ہاتھ میں کیمرہ ہوتا تھا اور میں سامنے ہوتا تھا تب بھی اور جب تم کیمرے کے علاوہ ملتے تھے تمہاری آنکھوں کی چمک سے اس محبت کا اظہار ہوتا تھا تمہارے چہرے کی ایک عجیب قسم کی رونق سے اس محبت کا اظہار ہوتا تھا غرض کے ہر طرح تمہارے ہر عمل سے یہ لگ رہا ہوتا تھا کہ کس طرح تم سے تم اس محبت کا اظہار کرو جو تمہیں خلیفہ وقت سے ہے پھول کا وہ پھول وہ مہا On the 24th of August, 2021, the 14th day of the holy month of Muharram, 1443 after Hijrah, a most devoted servant of Islam Ahmadiyyad, a true follower of Khilafat, and an exemplary waqf zindagi Sayyid Tale Ahmad was elevated to the status of a shaheed, a martyr in the way of Allah. Sayyid Tale Ahmed was ambushed while filming for a Muslim TV channel. He was in Ghana to report on charity work carried out by the Muslim community for the TV channel MTA. And it seems he was focused on his job to the very end. To know his life and pious actions is not only a source of inspiration, but how we keep the blessed memory of those who made the ultimate sacrifice for their Lord's sake alive. <laughs> We were married in Hartlepool and uh, Hazrat Khalifa Masih Rabbi Rahimullah Ta'ala came to do the nikah, so our nikah was done on the night. And I said to him, Hazur, uh, pray for uh, our children from this marriage. Pray for our children to be born out of this wedlock. And that brought, uh, you know, a beaming smile to Hazur's face. He was so pleased with that. His eyes filled, his face was smiling, but all he could manage was a nod, saying to me like this, yes. I will. And Tale <coughs> was not even conceived then, um, but the prayer started from him, I think from that moment. Sayyid Tale Ahmed was born to Sayyid Hashim Ahmed Sahib and Taiba Ahmed Sahiba on the 9th of February, 1990. یارب ہے تیرائے سان وی ہیڈ ریکویسٹیڈ حضور خلیف مسیر آب اف ہی کوڈ بی ان دا بک فن آر اسکیم اینڈ حضور ہیڈ گریشیسلی ایکسیپٹیڈ ہم حضور گیو ہم از نیم تالے وچ مینس ویری فارچونیٹ اور ون ہو رائز از لائک دا سن And he was always very, very fortunate. This most fortunate child was the progeny of blessed and holy ancestors. From his father's side, his grandmother was the daughter of Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmed, one of the blessed sons of the promised Messiah. From his mother's side, he was the grandchild of Hamid Khan Sahib and Sajida Hamid Sahiba. However, his paternal great grandfather, Hazrat Mir Muhammad Ismail had a most blessed lineage. 
we have uh, an authentic family tree from uh, our grandfather's side, right to Hazrat uh, uh, Ali Razi Allah Ta'ala uh, and Hazrat Imam Hassan Razi Allah Ta'ala and then Hazrat Ali Razi Allah Ta'ala So the, the combination of all these lineage, uh, Allah Ta'ala produced Sayyid Ali Ahmad. Out of all my children, he realized the importance of born of being born in a family who has lineage of prophethoods. That once you're born in this family, the life is not yours. It is to be lived for God. You have to live it the way He wants you to, and you have to die with the way He way He wants it to. And I'm so proud to say that every minute of his life was like that. Realizing the responsibility that he is born in the family of Promised Messiah Islam. And going beyond that, he is born in the family of Rasulullah When my father passed away, my mother had passed away before, after a few months, Dale's family moved into the house and basically to look after me. I was still a young, uh, uh, I was still a child myself at the time. And so then at that time I saw Thale and so then that relationship being an uncle at that time actually became more like a younger brother because we were living together and uh, you know how younger brothers they have uh, times when they are the best of friends, sometimes you have arguments. Thale was the most fun son, <laughs> loving, warm, confident, charming, uh, such a good company, such a great sense of humour, um, always kind always cheerful, very forgiving. Once Hazur, Hazrat Khalif al-Masid IV, he came to Hartlepool and Tale was only three or four years old and they were running around. So once Hazur was joking with my mum and she said, out of the four kids, who do you think is the most intelligent? And my, and my mum said, Abid, Abid that you know. And Hazur said, no, it's, it's Gugu. Gugu is, is Tale's mum. But he said, this little one, and he pointed to Tale, he said, that he's going to be more clever than all of them put together. <laughs> when five years old, he came to England and started school over here. And at that time, the teacher sent me, uh, you know, that this is what he has written, which was uh, for incredible, I thought, for a five-year-old, and I've still kept it. He said there, there was a plant and it was dying. And then there came a worm to live underneath the plant and gave it life and the plant started living. When worms actually bring life to the plant by burrowing through and making the air and uh, nourishment go to the roots of the plant. So the so, so five-year-old had the understanding of that. Abid Khan Saab, who is uh, our mamu, was head boy at school. Um, Dali, I think, wanted to be head boy as well because he was. Uh, and at that point, he had to do a, um, a speech, an election speech. And uh, for that speech, he dressed in a shalwar kameez and then he wrote a witty uh, poem which he recited. Um, so the fact that he won this competition um, just showed his character and what people thought of him. Um, and he never, you know, he never felt inferior. The fact that he went in in a shalwar kameez to say, I'm, a Bak I'm Pakistani and I'm proud of it. He really enjoyed studying religion and his faith, so if there was ever anything that I was confused about or I was trying to know more about, I knew that the person I could ask was Dalibai. My sister, so she wanted him to, even though she was work, she wanted him to do medicine first and then do work. But he, his heart was never really into it, so he, you know, he didn't really enjoy it very much. He was extremely intelligent, but it wasn't his passion. He was just doing it because his mum told him to do it. So he, 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 didn't, he didn't pursue that and he, he asked Azur advice. Azur said, do a, 
by the time he finishes, he did a biomed side degree in, uh, with the intention to do medicine, but he didn't really find his heart in that, so he didn't want to do the whole medicine. Hazur Ayatollah bin Nasr disease realized this problem, and he took him under his wings. So I still remember that he said, okay, you live in 39 over here. And, um, and he said, to start with, what you do is, meaning by his work started from the same time, that this is five volume commentary and you, you, re, you start reading it. Hazur realized what is, what this, um, when, what is his abilities. So he said, okay, you do uh, masters in journalism. Now, Azura said do master in journalism. And it's a very interesting incident. But he has uh, no degree. He's failed. But anyway, as Azura instructor, he applied for masters in journalism to Sunderland University, which was close to our house. And uh, he got admission, which was, you know, totally extraordinary. From that point onward, Taleb was not the Taleb we knew uh, from when Hazur took him over. Uh, he was uh, with us. He was like a diamond with coverings all over it and looked just like a stone. But Hazur polished him and made him into a diamond. <laughs> When we heard the news of Thales passing, Abid, my brother, passed on some messages that Hazur, some comments, some lovely things that Hazur had very kindly said. And in that, Hazur had said he was a hira, which meaning a diamond. And immediately I could feel in my heart gratitude to Allah and I could feel that, you know, Khilafat is such a blessing and so divinely inspired because many years before when I was considering uh, my husband's rishta, so even before I was married and I was doing my istikhara prayer, I had had a dream whereby I had gone through a very icy road and ended up in a wooden sort of cabin area where there was a very holy gentleman wearing one of our uh, flat topis that MDs wear. And I knew about this gentleman that he was extremely trustworthy and I trusted him beyond anything. And he took out in front of me many jewels and I just gained the impression that he was the richest man in the world in the dream. And upon this, my husband, future husband at the time, came into the room and took out a rock-sized diamond and placed that in front of us, as if to say he was also one of the richest people in the world. Obviously, I took the riches to mean spiritual riches and blessings, alhamdulillah. And when Hazur mentioned upon Thales, passing, that he was a diamond, I've, I felt a connection that this was the fulfillment of that dream. I was a very difficult child. I was a very difficult child. I was a very difficult child. I was a in 2013, Taleh, who was a Waqf in was appointed as a Waqf Zindagi by Hazrat Khalifa al Masih. And he was appointed under my supervision in the press and media office. And Tali worked there for two, three years in the press and media office. So he was spending half his time in MTA News and half his time in press office. And on top of that, throughout the years, and he started becoming involved in Majlis Khudam al-MTA as well. And he was also serving for a long period of time as the 
National Safety Jismani Secretary for Atfalul Amdiya. And then he also went on to serve as uh, the editor of Tahir magazine. And then uh, he did some other various roles in Majlis uh, Khatam al-Amdiya Ishaat uh, as well. So he was uh, a very good all-rounder. Any spare time he had really, he spent it uh, figuring out a way where he could serve the Jamaat in, in new, new ways. Talibai was really obedient and had immense love for Khilafat. And that, through, that showed through his conduct and whatever he said was in direct guidance of Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih, may Allah be his helper. I remember clearly that a few months ago when Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih was carrying out virtual clerk mulakats and in a few of those mulakats Hazrat mentioned that every murabbi should try to offer at least one hour of the Hajjad. But Talibai took this guidance upon himself and he wanted to carry out as if he was given this direct guidance. When we watch a football match, we often see the commentators say, or the players themselves say, that they would run through a brick wall for a manager. And of course, the work of the MD Muslim community is far more important than a mere football match. But I've often seen that the way Hazur addresses his workers and cares for his workers, he gives guidance with such wisdom that you become so motivated, you feel like you could actually run through a wall to fulfill the instructions of Hazrat Khalif al Masih. With just three days to go till Hazrat Khalif al Masih addresses 35,000 MD Muslims at the opening session of Jilsa Salana, Germany, preparations are already fast underway behind me. It was decided that Tale would work in MTA News full time. And, uh, and it was uh, around that time, or just a little bit before, that I'd been given the duty and responsibility of being the director of MTA News in charge of that department. Tale was of that young generation who brought some excitement and, a, f and, a, and a, a breath of fresh air to that team um, and really, you know, changed the way in which the news was presented on MTA for the better, by far for the better, and, and clearly under the guidance of Hazur. You know, he didn't go to Jamia. His like, first love was, you know, the work he did for the Jamaat and that was always his sort of end goal to sort of serve the Jamaat, which he ultimately did very successfully. Uh, when he was uh, Sethi Jasmani Secretary, he brought that into MTA News as well. He, he mixed, uh, he made sure that, you know, if there's an opportunity for to cover MTA News stuff whilst doing his Khudam al Amdiya stuff, he did that and he did it so well as well that he covered Atfal Football League uh, as part of MTA News and he used to make stories about it regularly when the football leagues were running. And uh, of course he did the MDA Muslim Youth Football Club a documentary as well for Love and the Game. This project, undertaken without any technical or operational knowledge of cameras at that time by Sayyid Tali Ahmed, would be the start of a series of ever-increasing documentary projects that would go about diversifying the content produced by the MTA News team. Sayyid Tali Ahmed then turned his attention towards his hometown and the foundations of the Jamaat that were laid there by his maternal grandparents, the town of Hartlepool. I was reluctant. I said that this is our hometown where we grew up. If we do a documentary about this, I don't want anyone to think that we're using MTA's um, facilities or uh, using our position within MTA to promote something related to that, that is directly intrinsically related to us. So I think that this is something that is better for us to leave. And uh, Tale said to me, he said that I'm not doing it because of you or because of me. I'm doing it because your parents, as in my parents, my grandparents, they did a lot of service. And there's a lot of Ahmadis in Hartlepool, English Ahmadis, and it should be recorded once in history. So when he said that, he, uh, he got me. And so then I said, okay, your point is valid. And so I went to Hazur and I, I said that this is what Dali wants to do. Uh, Hazur said, of course, 
that uh, this is their right, that MTA records their history. <laughs> How do our youngsters, how do we know, and, and even our kids and our grandkids, how do they know the history of Ahmadiyya than some, unless somebody makes the effort to document it? In the old days, people used to write, uh, you know, biographies, but the kids these days haven't got the patience to read biographies, like my kids haven't got patience for that, but they're quite happy, quite happy to watch a 20-minute YouTube video where then it documents everything. It seems that these two projects, as great as they were, were just a warm-up for Sayyid Ali Ahmed to pursue the very centre of his calling, his unmatched love, drive and passion for the representative of the promised Messiah, as Allah wasalam, Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih, Ayyidahullah ta'ala bin Asayil Aziz. Then uh, he told me he, after that that he wanted to do something about the uh, election of Hazrat Khalif Tumsi Khamis. He started preparing a documentary and when he showed it to me, there was a one or two minor things, but I remember seeing it and thinking that it's, it's truly beautiful. It's something that is really, really, I think, it's, it's touched my heart so much. But uh, the only, I think, small issue was over the title. And so I took the DVD to Hazur, and Hazur was watching the video. And um, at one point, uh, Tali's father he said something about his own experiences. He was he was in the uh, he was in the documentary about how it felt that we were without a shepherd. And Hazur was doing his work, and suddenly Hazur looked up. And he said, "Yeah," and I, I was a bit confused. And then Hazur said. Shepherd Galafs, the, the word shepherd, and I still I didn't follow. And Hazu said, Ke, four days without a shepherd. And then I said, but Tale, we've got a title. And he was like, what is it? And I said that four days without a shepherd. Hazu's heard your father's interview and then this. And Tale on the phone, he just became so overwhelmed and emotional. And I, I, you, this interview here is in Masjid Fazal. I remember I was just sat in my car just a few meters away. At the time Hazu lived here in Masjid Fazal. And Dali was completely overwhelmed and he was just saying, I can't believe that I have this honour that Khalifa Wakht uh, has chosen the name for my documentary. One of Tali's lasting legacies is that the standard of documentaries in MTA has definitely gone up, not just through the news department, but the production of producing documents, documentaries in the last two, three, four years, which are a much higher standard to previous. And I think uh, Dale's efforts have played a role in that. Every programme that he made, no matter what topic it was, whether it was the news items and the other documentaries that he made, his love for Khilafat and bringing people closer to Khilafat was, um, was a centre theme. And I think in that regard, our next generations, our children owe a lot to him because he played a vital role in that with his programs and documentaries. Obviously, he made several excellent documentaries which touched the hearts of millions of Ahmadis around the world. But for me, I think his, his main legacy which he left was um, This Week with Azul. Khalifa ke hum hain, Khalifa hamara, wo dil hai hamara. About two, three years ago, Tale came to me and he said that whenever Hazur has an event or a public event or a program, we, we, issue, we publish a short report on that day 
and but he said it doesn't get the exposure that it should. So I, we have a, we had a new slot every day, 15 minutes. So I said to him that okay, this week just prepare something instead of putting any news like world news or anything. We'll just put what you, uh, something regarding Hazu's activities that week. So I'll I'll give you the full slot. And so he prepared something and he sent it to me on WhatsApp or YouTube or whatever. And I checked it and it was a very nice piece about some of Hazu's meetings that week. And uh, so I said, go ahead, put it out there. And then just before it was uh, a couple of hours before he was, uh, he said to me, he said, well, what do we call it? Uh, we can't just call it World News. And I didn't have time to see Kazoo's guidance on this because it, the, the, the broadcast was in an hour. I didn't have Mulakat or I already had Mulakat that day. And so I was just racking my brains and I said to him, for this week, just call it This Week with Hazul. <laughs> so it's a simple, basic thing. Just call it that. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to MTN News. Each week we bring you a brief glimpse into Hazur's activities. And mashallah, we got so much feedback on that first episode. I got calls after calls that we love this program. The viewership was very good. Throughout that early period, we used to produce everything. But I think this program really has come into its own during the pandemic. Because people were desperate, especially in the early parts, to see Hazur, to hear from him. One benefit is that, which I get from this virtual malakat is that, that uh, I can see your faces. I can see how strong and staunch the people of the community are in their faith. And I can see the love for the Khilafat on their faces, as I can see on your face. So this is the benefit which I am also getting. <laughs> اگر دس سال کام کیا ہے تو دس سال میں سے شاید اس نے ایک لمحہ بھی ضائع نہیں کیا اپنے کام سے اگر وہ مثلا ہم لوگ آپس میں بیٹھے باتیں بھی کریں تو اس میں سے بھی وہ اپنے کام سے جو اس کے ذہن پروجیکٹ ہوتے تھے نا اس کی باتیں شروع کر دیتا تھا اس میں سے بھی وہ نکال لیتا تھا طالب بھائی نو اونلی واز مائی کولیگ بھائی واز آلسو مائی ٹیچر اے فرینڈ رادر اے برادر تھرو آٹ دیز لاسٹ تھری ایئرس Obviously, I've been struggling with his passing, as everyone has. But one thing I've realized is that anyone I speak to, they tell me the same stories. The reoccurring theme that they keep saying is that he was like a brother to me. He was like an older brother to me. He was like a younger brother to me. And what I've realized is, is that to, to all of those people, he was a brother, just like I'm his brother. The only difference is we have the same blood. بہت ہس مکھ خوش مزاج کچھ کہہ بھی دو تو وہ بس ہنسی میں ٹال دیتا تھوڑا دیتا تھا بات کو ہر وقت میں نے اس بچے کو ہنستے مسکراتے جتنی دیر ہم لوگ آ رہے ہیں آپس میں ہمارے میرے ساتھ رہا ہے ان کا ہمیشہ ہنستا مسکراتا اور ابھی بھی جات ابھی گانا جانے کے بعد روز مجھے ایک ویڈیو بھیج رہا تھا ایک اپنی تصویریں بھیج رہا تھا وہ حضور کے جو پرانے اسکول کے درخت کا امرود توڑ ہے وہ میری آخری تصویر تھی جو اس کی میں نے وفات کے بعد شہادت بعد کھول لی ہے تو میرا مجھے پتہ چلا ہے کہ یہ اس کی آخری تصویر ہے ونس آئی ریمبر می این تالے ہیڈ این آرگیومنٹ اباؤٹ پوائنٹ اینڈ اوبیسلی آئی واز کلیئرلی رانگ ان دیٹ آئی سینٹ تالے اے لنک وچ شوڈ ہم دیٹ ہز پوائنٹ واز کریکٹ اینڈ ہی واز لائک وائی یو سینڈنگ می دس یو سینڈنگ می دس از لائک Uh, an atheist giving a Muslim the Holy Quran. <laughs> so he had his uh, sense of humor as well and, um, uh, and his own way of, th uh, of thinking, which is, uh, I really enjoyed that and uh, it stuck with me. <laughs> By the grace of Allah, Sayyid Tali Ahmed embodied the spirit of a true Waqfi Zindagi as witnessed by so many of his close friends and family. This included a sense of humility, selflessness and complete lack of ego, an unquenched thirst for knowledge and none more than his attention to the rights of his neighbours. When I almost died, by the grace of Allah, the prayers of Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih, Allah, and the believers, Allah saved me. He said, the way 
how we took care of him. He took care of us. He said, we became one family. He made a pledge. If something happens to Ibrahim, oh Allah, I will take care of his children and his wife till my death. And he said, this is a solid promise, oh Allah. One really unique quality of Talibai was that I have never come across any individual with such quality or such determination to carry this task out was that he was the only person I knew that had listened to the entire Dersu Klan classes of Khalif al-Masir al So he frequently used to walk to work from Faza Mosque before that he was leaving, living near Faza Mosque. And he used to walk to work, put his headset on, he used to download those classes on his phone and he used to just listen to them on the way to work, to Bethel school. And then same thing on the way back. This way he would listen to at least two, three episodes on his way here and on the way back. It's, it, it's a long journey, it would take roughly about an hour. Sometimes he would come to me and we would, when often we're sitting in the office, he would discuss certain points that Khalifa Rabi Rahimullah would mention or, and that way I got to learn some things about from those classes as well. We were on holiday in Pakistan and the whole trip, just doing work the whole time. He was taking interviews of people. We went on a tour of the city of Lahore and he was had his camera the whole time and he was trying to get the most scenic shots. And he said to me that last time I came, you know, it was his holiday from work, so he didn't take any work, which is what most people would do. But he said he realised that he enjoys his time the most when he, he's doing work. So he said, this time, I've made sure that I'm doing work the whole time. And he loved that trip, mashallah. And it was a big part of it was because he got to do work for MTF the whole time that he was there. Uh, that he had this hard drive, which he had bought with his own money. And he had all his projects that he was working on and all his footage and etc. He had that on his hard drive. And uh, I think he said this to me, and he must have also said it to my colleague, Noshan Wan, uh, that all my work is on this hard drive. And if anything happens to me, you guys know that it's, it's on here, and you guys know what to do uh, to con kind of continue my work. So at the time, he said it in a joking way, but I thought it was a, maybe a bit of a strange comment, but this incident shows his selflessness as well, because um, he wasn't really concerned about himself, he was concerned more about the work. He would come to me for little bits of technical advice. He, I helped him to um, digitise some videotapes and a few other bits and pieces. And he was always so uh, uh, humble about it. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a big thing for me to do, but he would put my name in the credits at the end of the, at the, end of the documentary. Um, and then he would tell me, you know, you need to check, your name is there on the credits. And, and you know, it was, a, it was a testament to the fact that he never saw any of the work that he did as being just um, his work or his dedication, even though it was, you know, 99% of the of the effort he put in himself. Um, he always said, you know, it was it's Azur's direction, um, the blessings of Khilafat and, and other people have helped me. Um, and it was just an incredible testament to, to him as a person that, that he, he did it with such humility. <laughs> Well, I'm Kadir Shaheed, I was my um, uh, first cousin and my best friend. We grew up together from age three year and four years ago. I saw a dream after he passed away and I saw him in a dream and I knew that I was meeting him. So I put my hand on his hand and I asked him, can I do anything for you? And he said uh, to get married one of my child to his child. So that became like a, a spiritually ordained duty for me from that point onward as well. So I still remember him that I called him uh, and uh, his mother also sitting over there and he was having a pizza. And I started this conversation with him that this is my desire and this is I would like to do if you are willing. And I still remember that he had a pizza in his hand. It never went into his mouth, just stood there. Um, and he immediately after that, he said, yes, I'll do. Yes, please send my rishta. And as it was lucky enough, the girl said yes, 
to a 17 year old and uh, they got married when they were 21. I can share with you what, what I mentioned it to him and I said that you are marrying a daughter of a martyr. So she is an orphan but don't expect that she is an orphan. I'll be a father to her first and I will be a father to you later. So you have to uh, look at it from that side and treat her, treat her like that. And uh, his wife told me that, you know, he used to, um, he, he was a very humorous person, you know, make humor of everything. And he used to say that, um, you know, I said yes to my father because he promised that he'll give me a pizza for next one week. <laughs> बेटी की वजह से मेरा अलग-अलग दुख है, मगर मुझे ताले का ताले की वजह से तकलीफ है। वो इतना प्यारा बच्चा था मैं मुझे मैं अपने बच्चों को यही कह रही थी कि मुझे लगता है कि मेरा बच्चा चला बच्चा चला गया है मेरा और मेरा दोस्त चला गया है। ताले took uh, took it, it, it really seriously and considered a great honour that he was marrying the daughter of somebody who had been martyred for the sake of Ahmadiyyat. And he had a sincere desire to be a good husband. And I know that he tried very, very hard uh, to make a happy, he was a happy natured person himself and cheerful. Nobody make me laugh, right? Okay. I don't want I don't want to have to edit it, right? Okay. Muskurata tha hamesha wo najib bin najib. Hazur instructed that the news department should continue to make some documentaries, and Hazur said himself said that one documentary that you should do is about the Nusrat Jahan scheme, about how the services of the Jamaat in Africa. And so Dali was very excited and happy about this project. He said, I, was, I had a mulaqat with Hazur, and Hazur said to me at that time, and this must be seven, eight years ago at least, that uh, maybe bej Africa, that should I send you to Africa as well? And Dali said that out of embarrassment or just shyness, I just kept quiet. But he said that in my heart, I was just desperate to say to Hazur, please, please send me to Africa for some work. And he said that ever since that day, he said, I knew, I knew Hazur will never break his promise or that, even that indication. So I just kept waiting for that day. And he said, today you've told me that Hazur is sending me to Africa. So he was really full of excitement, full of uh, happiness. He um, requested prayers and said, I'm going for five weeks. Um, he told me he was going to uh, Gambia, Sierra Leone, uh, uh, and uh, Ghana, and uh, he was extremely excited about it. When he was getting ready to go to Africa, he was so excited. And um, <clears throat> he phoned me and he messaged me to ask for advice. I'd been out to Gambia um, about a year or so before, um, and, and he was, I wouldn't say nervous, but he, he wanted to make sure that nothing would stand in the way of him being able to do the work that he needed to do. And that again was a, was a testament to his dedication. You know, it would have been, he would have um, been very upset if because of some oversight, he'd not been able to do his MTA work. You know, he'd got ill, he'd got um, um, an infection or whatever it was. Um, if something stood in the way of doing that. Mashallah, by all reports, his own reports, I could tell, but even from the other people in Africa, such a, he was working with pure devotion and dedication in the last few days. He sent me some video and some photographs, and I, I couldn't believe um, how beautiful and how serene he looked. And my last text to him was, uh, Mashallah, you look so happy. My family will be happy. This is Africa! <laughs> <laughs> it was on the evening of the 24th of August when Sayyid Tale Ahmed and two of his colleagues from MTA Studios in Ghana were travelling from the northern town of Tamale 
when their vehicle was fired upon by armed robbers. Sayyid Tali Ahmed and his colleague Umar Farooq were hit, and Abid Khan Saab received the shocking news from the director of MTA Africa, Umar Safir Sahib. And I remember I was just sat on, in, on the sofa in my lounge and I just jumped out of my chair and that feeling of pain, shock, it's just indescribable. But he said to me, he said, don't worry, though the reports are that he's okay. They were saying that they're in a small hospital and they need to take Dale to a bigger hospital. And just the fact that they needed to take him to that bigger hospital was a cause of concern for me, that it means that something's not quite right. Otherwise they would, could treat him where he is. But I was just praying and I informed Dale's father as well. As soon as I found out, uh, of course, I informed Hazrat Khalifa Thunas, he was late at night and until about midnight, half twelve, Hazu was getting uh, was inquiring about Tale, and uh, I told him as much as I knew. <laughs> then, about two thirty in the morning, I received a call from a missionary in Ghana, and he was weeping and he was crying and he just said inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun and he said we couldn't save Tale. it was obviously it was a feeling of complete shock and devastation and just a thousand things within a moment go flashing through your mind how was he feeling in those moments all these things running through your mind at the same time you also have this immediate sense of reassurance that he was there on Jamaat duty, he was serving the Jamaat and in our Jamaat, no matter what happens, we always have the prayers of Khalifa i Waqt. Hazu wrote uh, and uh, responded with such prayers for Tale, for his family, for his wife, for his children, that even in those moments of grief, which were horrific, and I know that if we didn't have the prayers and guidance of Khalifa Waqt, I don't think I would have survived that night, never mind his close family and friends, the pain and the, the difficulties that we felt at that time. But. Uh, the, through the prayers and the, the guidance of Azur, the love of Azur, all of his family, his, his wife, his parents, his brothers, his sisters, the members of the Jamaat, the staff of MTA, everyone's greatly grief-stricken, of course, but so much strength, pride, pride as well. That is one of the overriding emotions I felt the last few days as well. Everyone, and you get to know so many things about Tale, so many things that you'd never heard. And uh, so, of course, it's a time of sadness, but also it's a time of certainly pride that uh, Dale wanted to serve the Jamaat. He wanted to, he was a Waqf Zindagi in spirit and in the way he fulfilled his duties to the very last with bravery and with courage. <laughs> He was uh, also son-in-law of a Shaheed. His father-in-law was the first martyr in the family of Promised Messiah Islam, and he is the second one. So his wife holds this station now that she is the daughter of a Shaheed, and she is a wife of a shaheed as well, alhamdulillah. Dale was a very loving husband and a true friend to me. A few months ago, uh, I had some errands to run and as I was walking towards the mall, I was overcome by sudden grief and sadness and I started to cry. After some time, I composed myself and continued to do the little jobs that I wanted to do. 
When I came home, I opened the door to our bedroom and Tale looked at me and said, have you been crying? And I said, yes. I thought he maybe from my face, he's able to tell that I was upset. But then he said, about 20, 25 minutes ago, I heard you cry. And so I got out of bed and looked around the whole house, but you were not there. I wanted to console you. You were not, not there. I think I love me. I always told him whenever I needed him that Dali loved his children. And it's just my request to the whole Jamaat to, to always remember his children in your prayers. I was making a documentary about my husband and my husband. اس کا مجھے فون ہے اس نے مجھے ایک خواب سنائی کہ منیر عہدے صاحب اس کو گھسیٹ کے زبردستی لے کے جا رہے ہیں اور حضرت کیونکہ انہوں نے حضرت میاں بشیر احمد صاحب کے پاس لے کے جانا ہے کہ انہوں نے اسی گردن پہ چھری پھیرنی ہے اور تالے کو میں نے کہا دیکھو منیر کا مطلب ہوتا ہے روشنی منیر کا مطلب تو یہ تمہارے لیے ان کا نام بہت اچھا ہے لیکن بہرحال صدقہ دینے والی خواب ہے Yesterday, my husband was able to speak with the gentleman that was with Dale when he was passing away. And his last words was a message to his family, which was, I love my family and I love Hazur. He has been married to him and has been کہ اپنی آخری الفاظ میں جبکہ وہ موت و حیات کی حالت میں تھا اسے خلیفہ وقت سے پیار اور وفا کا ہی خیال تھا His last texts to me all of it sort of just pointed towards the obedience to Khilafat so I thought mashallah that the fact that my last messages from him he could have replied to my messages the last messages from him were even then guiding me towards obeying Khilafat, then I think that just really embodies his own love for Khilafat. Alhamdulillah, the day that Tale passed away, it was so kind and so gracious of Azur that he came to see us all. And very kindly, and, and in such a loving way, uh, discussed the incident, and then listened to some of the things that we wish to say about our beloved son and obviously the other relatives too and it was a source of it, great comfort and I know as I've learned in the last few days I didn't know before just how much Tale loved Tazur I knew he loved Tazur but I didn't know he loved him the way that he did Allah Ta'ala made him for what he's done and he lived his life like a shaheed and he died like one, and he knew that as well. But when he was dying, he said, whether I live or die, my mission is accomplished. He took his work extremely seriously. Uh, many times, or, uh, or several times, I should say, Hazur has told me that the Jamaat is not contingent upon any single person. This is a, a divine Jamaat. So, mashallah ta'ala did his duty. Now it's up to the rest of us to fulfill our duties. I think one of the things that we see when we look at Hazur's character is how as Hazrat Khalif the Masih is the fifth successor of the promised Messiah Islam, He's a perfect representation of the promised Messiah al Islam. He's per a perfect representative for this era. He is, truly, he is Khalifa al Waqt. So when we see Hazur in this role where he so courageously, like a lion of God, defends Islam, then we think that Hazur shouldn't be by himself. He should be, we should join him, we should stand up to help him. And how can we do that? So Hazur said that although there is a promise of the victory of Islam Ahmadiyyat, whether it happens sooner or later, it depends on how hard we're willing to work. So now it's up to you on how hard you work. Talib used to write letters to Hazur on a regular basis. So he would 
regularly send me letters on a weekly basis or every so often he used to send me letters and then whenever I could I, I would forward those. So one of the letters that he had written before going to um, Africa and he had written in that letter that has all that I am unworthy of this task that I am going to go forward with and I have shortcomings and weaknesses so pray that Allah removes those weaknesses and uh, makes me a good representative of MTA, Jamaat and the Promised Messiah and the family of the Promised Messiah Islam. I felt as if his prayers are accepted and he has received the best reward that he could have received. He was of course my nephew and somebody I loved very very much but because of that relationship I was always very very uh, feeling that I don't want any of my other staff or anyone else to think that I give him preferential treatment and uh, because of that I think from my side I went the other way and I was more harsh with him, more stricter with him than I was with any of the other people who work with me. And that is something that I, I feel that it, I must have done some injustices. And uh, I just pray that God forgives those injustices. And I hope that he knew that, that that was the reason, because I knew his potential. कि जिस्मानी और रोहानी आल होने का हक भी दास उसने दा कर दिया और उसको भी लताला ने ऐसा लिया कि आंसरम की आल में से था तो मोहरम के महीने में उसको भी कुर्बानी के लिए चुना एक हीरा वाकफ ज़िंदगी का था जैसे मैंने कहा लताला उसके दर्जात बुलान से बुलान तर करता चला जाए उम्मीद है कि लताला ने उसे आह हजरत सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम के कदमों में जगह दी होगी बल्कि किसी ने उसकी विफात के बाद खाब भी देखी द नेक्स्ट मॉर्निंग समबडी सेंट अस अ मैसेज आफ्टर ही हैड पास्ड अवे एंड ही सेड दैट आई वाज ऑब्वियसली फीलिंग सॉरो एंड एंड सैडनेस टू हियर ऑफ ताले's पासिंग बट एट नाइट आई ड्रेम्ड दैट ताले वाज वॉकिंग स्माइलिंग इन पैराडाइस and he, there was a group of people at the head of which stood the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when Tale recognized and realized that it was the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he started running towards him. And then he, he ran and he embraced him. And Hazur laughed, the, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam laughed gently and embraced him back and said, Welcome, my dear son. तो वो मैंने कहा सतवर तुम्हें तो बेटे सतवर ने जब मुझे बताया कि मैंने दुआ की थी और मैं जागी तो ये मुझे हाशिम साहब ने बताया ये कहा कि ये उनका मैसेज आया तो मैंने कहा बच्चे तुम्हें तो अल्लाह ने वहीं कबूलियत की खुशखबरी दे दी है इस ख्वाब के बाद ताले की मैं एक पुरानी ख्वाब देख रही थी उसका आखिरी हिस्सा ये था कि जैसे कि मैं आ हजूर सल्लम का बेटा हूँ आ हजूर सल्लम मेरे वालद हैं इस तरह का लिखा हुआ उसने तो देखें इनकी ख्वाब इनको पता ही नहीं है और मुझे मैंने बहुत दफ़ा वो ख्वाब उसकी पढ़ी हुई थी मगर मेरी तवज्जो ही नहीं गई इस आखिरी लाइन की तरफ कि आज वो सर सलम मेरे वाले दें तो अब कल मैंने जब उसके पुराने मैसेजेस खोल के पढ़ी थी तो ये ख्वाब का आखिरी मुझे लाइन थी तो मैंने कहा चले उस ख्वाब की वो भी हो गया मतलब कन्फर्म अल्लाह ही जानता है वैसे लेकिन बज़ाहिर तो वो भी कन्फर्म हो गई उनकी ख्वाब You know, in the end, uh, you can't help but to reiterate, reiterate the words of the Holy Prophet وسلم, when his son Ibrahim passed away. In the eye that is dark, and in the heart that is shy, we do not say even what we want, O Lord. And we are on the edge of our seats, O Lord, who are watching. Verily, our eyes are full of tears, and our heart grieves. But we say only. what our Lord is pleased with. And indeed, we grieve on your separation. So sometimes the spirit goes into a slumber and sometimes it dies. And shahadat has a quality that it wakes up the slumbering spirits or dead spirits, if it gives them life. And I have a personal experience of that because it happened to me. <laughs> and 
And I'm sure that Shahadat of Sayyid Ali Ahmad is going to be a source of life for so many thirsty spirits, slumbering spirits, and dead spirits. In, in general, for all in Jamaat, but especially for um, the spirits in the family of Promised Messiah. Alayhi salam. <laughs> और इस अहद को हकीकी रंग में निभाने वाला था जो उसने किया था मुझे हैरत होती थी उसे देखकर और अब तक होती है कि किस तरह इस दुनियावी माहौल में पलने वाले बच्चे ने अपने वक्फ को समझा और फिर उसे निभाया और ऐसा निभाया कि इसके मायार को इंतहा तक पहुंचा दिया और शहीद होकर बता गया कि मैं खिलाफत का हकीकी मददगार बना हूं बस वाकफ जिंदगी के लिए भी वो एक नमूना था और खानदान हज मुसीम अब्दुल सलात अस्सलाम का फर्ज होने की हसीयत से खानदान के अफराद के लिए भी वो वफा और इखलास का एक नमूना कायम कर गया ए प्यारे ताले मैं गवाही देता हूं कि यकीनन तुमने अपने वक्फ पर ऐत के आला तरीन मायारों को हासिल कर लिया अल्लाह ताला ऐसे वफाशार खिलाफत से इखलास और वफा का तल्लुक रखने वाले और दीन को दुनिया पर मुकदम रखने वाले जमात को ताफरमाता रहे